Good. Yeah. Well, uh, good evening, and thank you for the invitation to speak today. Um, my name is Dr. Simon Clark, and today I'll be introducing BATMO, which is an MRST extension for modeling batteries. Uh, the talk is uh, scheduled to be in three parts. In the beginning, we'll review uh, why batteries, why are we here talking about this uh, today. Uh, part two discusses uh, the methods that are applied and the equations that are applied to, uh, to model uh, batteries on the continuum scale. And part three will introduce uh, the BATMO MRST extension. Good. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So why batteries? Well, as uh, I'm sure most uh, people here know, electric vehicles are becoming a thing. Uh, they're very much in demand, and the growth that we've seen over the past 10 years uh, is going to be dwarfed by what we expect to see over the next 10 years. Uh, global EV stock is projected to grow from 5 million units today to over 140 million units uh, in the next 10 years. And it's not only electric vehicles. Uh, there's a push to, uh, to install uh, renewable energy sources in the grid uh, to help meet our uh, climate change goals. And uh, in order to do that, large scale energy storage is necessary to stabilize these intermittent uh, wind and uh, solar energy sources. Um, we're also starting to see some other sectors taking note of the success in uh, electrification generally. Uh, Europe is investing in the electrification of its ferry fleet, and here in Norway, uh, just last year, there were 60 new uh, battery electric ferries under construction. And finally, even some applications that a few years ago everybody thought was just totally crazy, uh, like uh, aviation, is even starting to, uh, to become electric. And in Norway, we're aiming for all domestic flights to be electric by 2040, and there are similar goals in uh, Sweden and Iceland. So all of this to say that uh, the demand for batteries is growing very fast and not just uh, any batteries. We need uh, batteries that are very uh, energy dense, uh, that have a very high power capability and that are based on sustainable materials uh, so that we can actually supply all of these uh, units. And uh, that's not always so easy to do. So in order to do that, we need uh, model-based design tools that can help us accelerate that process and design high performing systems. So uh, before we dive into the details, I think most people here are uh, fairly new to, uh, to batteries and to electrochemistry. Uh, so I wanted to do a kind of crash course in what a battery is and how it works. So uh, a battery is comp comprised of a few different components. In a lithium ion cell, which is like the ones uh, you know, in your cell phones and in your cars, uh, they consist of two electrodes connected by an electrolyte. On the positive electrode side, you have a metal foil current collector. It's like a, a piece of aluminum foil that's coated with a transition metal oxide uh, metal powder. On the negative electrode side, our active material is graphite, and that is coated onto a copper uh, metal uh, foil. Connecting these two electrodes is a liquid electrolyte, uh, which uh, allows ions to pass, lithium ions to pass, but blocks electrons from, from coming through. And to keep these electrodes from touching each other and creating an inter internal short circuit, there's a porous piece of polymer called a separator uh, that just helps keep them apart. So when the cell is uh, charged, our lithium ions uh, will be released from our cathode material and that donates an electron uh, which travels through the external circuit and recombines with uh, lithium on the other side in the, uh, in the anode. And uh, conversely, when we are ready to discharge our battery, uh, the opposite process takes place. Lithium ions are released from the anode, travel back through the electrolyte and through the separator where they recombine with their electrodes or with, with their electrons uh, in the positive electrode. So this uh, animation took a long time to animate, so I'm going to get my money's worth and play it again. <laughs> uh, we can see as the cell charges, the lithium ions are released from the uh, positive electrode and uh, combine with their electrons in the negative electrode. And likewise, when we discharge it, lithium ions go back uh, across the electrolyte into the positive electrode and are recombined with their uh, electrons. So because of this, this kind of mechanism where we're just shifting uh, lithium back and forth, 
uh, that one nickname for this type of chemistry is called a rocking chair battery. So lithium is just rocking back and forth from, from one electrode to another. So that's the schematic. Uh, in practice, it looks something like this, where we have our negative electrode separator and positive electrode. Um, those uh, materials can be coated onto uh, foil current collectors. Uh, that looks something like that and uh, wound or stacked to create a battery cell. So if we were to go into our Tesla and crack open the pack, we would find a, a cell that looks like this. And if we cut into it, we would find layers and layers of these materials all wound up together in a, uh, in a spiral. So, uh, if we want to design better batteries, which is a, uh, a pressing need in the community at the moment, we need a few things. We need knowledge. We need models uh, that allow us to, uh, to test that knowledge. And we need experiments to uh, help inform the uh, uh, model development and uh, our knowledge base. But these things aren't uh, disconnected. They, they actually form a kind of uh, cycle where our knowledge uh, informs models that can be, then be validated by experiments and uh, feeding this new knowledge for the system. And if we iterate on that enough, eventually we get out a, a better battery design. But uh, in, in battery development, this process tends to be very trial and error driven. And a lot of information gets lost in between the individual steps. And it just takes a really long time. So to help address that, uh, digitalization is becoming a very important part of, uh, of battery research and development. And at Centef, we're working on taking a, an holistic approach to, uh, to uh, addressing each one of these points. But my talk today uh, will cover um, the models uh, that we're developing and uh, we can dive into that. So part two, battery modeling. Uh, when we think about um, batteries and why we might need models, uh, oftentimes this is the image that comes to mind, right? This comes up in, in the news uh, every now and then about uh, batteries uh, catching fire either in, in cars or in airplanes or in ships and uh, safety is a big concern. So uh, when, we, uh, when we design models for, uh, for battery design uh, optimization, uh, designing for safety is one of the, the top uh, use cases for these, these systems. Uh, but it's not just that. Uh, the battery industry is extremely competitive. I mean, every, every cent that you can shave off the, uh, the cost and every extra watt hour you can get in the cell, uh, matters a lot in the battery cell production industry. So it's constantly going through this kind of uh, optimization and refinement uh, of the design. Uh, these slides come from Tesla's uh, battery day uh, that was held last year. And uh, in, their, uh, in their new uh, cell format, uh, these very, very thick uh, fat uh, uh, cylindrical cells, you know, just, just through optimization of the format and the packing, they're able to get much higher energy, uh, extended range, higher power, and it's kind of a, a neat success story for, um, for battery um, cell design. So we apply models for safety. We apply models to design for engineering versus power optimization. Uh, heat management is a very uh, big concern. You can imagine, I'm sure, if you want to fast charge your battery and you have all of these electrons flowing, it's gonna heat up, and uh, we want to be able to manage that. Um, new material design, uh, the, uh, the supply of uh, critical raw materials for, uh, for batteries are uh, yeah, going to be stretched in the future. So we're always looking for new, more sustainable, cheaper materials. And uh, research and development to help us better understand uh, what are the processes that are going on in the battery and how can we leverage that understanding in the design process. So there are a lot of uh, different ways that batteries can be modeled, uh, but one of the, the, most, uh, the most applicable methods for getting the most detailed information uh, from, a, from a model is electrochemical continuum modeling. Uh, the state of electrochemical systems can be described by a few variables. Uh, the concentration of the different active species, 
Uh, so in lithium ion batteries, that would be the concentration of lithium, uh, the local electric potential and the temperature. Uh, these, uh, these variables can be expressed uh, and solved uh, using continuity equations for conserved quantities uh, for things like mass, charge, and energy. And as I'm sure everybody knows here and everybody who's been using uh, MRST is aware, uh, the finite volume method is, uh, offers an efficient way to solve continuity uh, equations in uh, 1D, uh, 2D, and 3D grids. So if we define some, some control volume, uh, we can track the uh, flux over the surface and the source terms in the middle and uh, calculate the, uh, the time rate of change for some conserved quantity there. So from this kind of general uh, expression of a, of a continuity equation, how can we start to relate this, this well-known form uh, to uh, batteries and to electrochemistry? And we can start with the source term. So the source term is going to describe our reactions. And in order to, uh, to create a model of that, we need to know something about the thermodynamics of those uh, electrochemical reactions. And we need to know something about the kinetics of those reactions. Then when it comes to flux, uh, we need to know about transport. Uh, and that uh, can occur through diffusion, uh, which is uh, driven by the gradient in concentration or migration uh, driven by the gradient in electric potential. There's been a lot of work done over the last 30 years on uh, establishing theories for, um, describe, for uh, transport and reactions in electrochemical systems. And uh, we can benefit from applying those in our uh, continuum models. One is a concentrated solution theory, which allows us to describe diffusion migration of uh, lithium ions in our electrolyte solution. Uh, when it comes to thermodynamics, we can apply the law of mass action, uh, in some cases combined with empirical intercalation models uh, to predict the thermodynamics of different materials. And uh, for the kinetics, the uh, butler fulmer approximation linking uh, current density to applied voltage uh, helps us to uh, create some coupling terms there. So let's have a look into the details of those. and. Uh, and take the next step. So within the electrolyte, uh, as we saw in our uh, cartoon before, uh, we have lithium ions that are moving back and forth between our electrodes. And to drive that transport, uh, there are two, uh, two driving forces that we can use. One is the gradient in the concentration of the lithium itself and through a diffusive process. Uh, the second is through a uh, gradient and the electric potential because lithium uh, is charged plus one. Uh, we can uh, generate a, a flow of, uh, of ions that way. So uh, what we have here are the, uh, the continuity equations that we uh, would use for set up for the electrolyte. So the uh, uh, conservation of lithium uh, is a function of the uh, diffusive mass flux. Uh, combined with the uh, mass flux uh, driven by the electric potential gradient and the source term uh, linked to our electrochemical reactions. Uh, because our uh, system deals in the flow of charged particles, we know that on the macro scale, uh, the charge has to be conserved. So we have our uh, charge continuity equation that allows us to, uh, to solve for local electric potential. So within our electrolyte, we have two state variables uh, in an isothermal uh, model, and that's concentration of lithium and local electric potential. So uh, yeah, our lithium will move down the uh, concentration gradient and uh, down the uh, potential gradient. Okay, within the uh, electrode, uh, as, as we can recall, an electrode uh, is comprised of the active material that actually participates in the electrochemical reaction. And that's uh, pasted onto a current collector whose job is to bring electrons uh, into the cell from the uh, external circuit. And uh, this has contact with uh, some electrolyte, which uh, brings our, our ions uh, between the, uh, the two electrodes. So if we want to derive a system of equations that describes uh, this, uh, this, this system, uh, we need a, a term expressing the uh, the transfer of charge in uh, electrons, uh, which here's just uh, Ohm's law. 
and uh, the local conservation of uh, charge. Uh, once lithium is inserted into uh, the active material, it actually loses its charge and becomes charge neutral. So the diffusion of lithium uh, here is driven just by the uh, concentration gradient and linked to our source term here. So we can see a uh, kind of a schematic of how that looks. Our electrons come in uh, through uh, our current collector into the active material where they're transported to the interface. Once they get to the interface, they uh, react with our uh, lithium ions that are then inserted into the active material and diffuse uh, through that domain. Okay, so finally, um, we need to look at the electrochemical reactions and how these can be used to couple the uh, electrode domains with the electrolyte. So uh, for that, we have a, a handy uh, equation called the Butler-Fulmer approximation, which links the uh, electric current density uh, that we're able to, uh, to get from our electrode to the, uh, the applied uh, electric potential um, or the, the voltage in the cell. And uh, at equilibrium, when the cell is just sitting there and not operating at all, the uh, there's a, a rate of lithium uh, intercalation and deintercalation that's just happening uh, at the same rate forward and back. So the net transfer is zero. And we call this our exchange current density. Then uh, when the uh, cell is, is uh, operated, uh, the uh, change in electric potential drives a, a force uh, pushing the elect, uh, lithium out of our active material and uh, generating our electric current. So schematically, that looks something like this, where the, uh, uh, here we can see a, a representation of the Butler-Fulmer approximation, uh, where we, if we change the uh, current density here, uh, you get uh, much larger currents for uh, much less uh, applied over potential. So it has a, uh, a good uh, uh, impact on uh, the, current, or the current that you're able to get from your cell. Okay, uh, so we, 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 can, we can set up our, our system of equations and a lot of these probably look very familiar to people who are, uh, who are used to uh, porous, uh, porous media uh, flow. Uh, but one of the downsides is that these models require a lot of parameters. Uh, they require parameters about thermodynamics or the open circuit uh, potentials of different electrode materials that require information about kinetics, rate constants and uh, transport properties like the conductivity of our solutions, um, diffusion coefficients. And that takes a lot of work. A lot of work goes into the par parameterization. So within uh, BATMO, we're preparing an interactive library of materials and properties to help users uh, simulate their own systems without having to do so much parameterization uh, in their lab themselves. Okay, so finally, let's uh, have a look at BATMO for uh, MRST and uh, see uh, how this is, is being developed and, and what it can do. So uh, BATMO is an open source uh, code and we're, we're making it open to support the activities in the battery modeling community. Uh, it's powerful. It can do these dynamic simulations, not only on 1D and 2D meshes, which is fairly common in, in the battery field, but also on 3D meshes, which is rather um, unique. Uh, it's flexible. We've designed it to be chemistry neutral so that we can uh, adapt it to new systems with uh, the minimum amount of recoding possible. And it's fast. Uh, we apply automatic differentiation with the MRST solvers, and that uh, brings us some, some nice benefits compared to other open source codes. So BATMO itself, as we've mentioned, is a finite volume continuum modeling framework for electrochemical devices. Uh, within the battery field, we call those P2D, 3D, and P4D uh, models. And there we see some nice colored pictures. Um, it takes an electrochemistry neutral approach. So we're at the beginning, we're focusing on lithium ion batteries, but we're not stopping there. Uh, we're also looking at um, electrolyzers for uh, green hydrogen production and uh, uh, electrochemical systems involving seawater. Uh, this is implemented uh, with MRST tools in MATLAB and uh, we're setting up a website called batterymodel.com where you'll be able to find out more. 
So um, Batmo uses a modular setup uh, to help us uh, minimize the amount of recoding necessary uh, when modeling different systems. So for example, uh, an electrode is a very common component across any kind of electrochemical uh, device. So we try to code this in a way that is generic enough so that when you know, we want to create a, a different implementation of a different kind of electrode, all we have to do is go back and update some material parameters uh, but the, the foundations are basically the same. And we can see an example of, of how that uh, looks like uh, with this uh, computational graph that, um, that we've, we've created. So for example, uh, we define an electronic component. And an electronic component is uh, something where electrons can be transferred, but there's no mass uh, being moved. So a current collector, for example, would be a, an example of an electronic component. And here we set up the uh, charge conservation equations with our boundary conditions. And we can see from our, our computational graph that uh, from into our charge conservation equation, uh, it, it factors in the uh, local electric potential, which drives the current density. And that together with our uh, boundary condition and local electron source can be used to set up that conservation term. We can then extend that and create a similar uh, generic template for an electrochemical component. So this would be like the, um, the active material in our electrodes where we have electrons being transferred and we can see uh, from the previous slide our, uh, our electronic component terms. And then added to that, uh, we now have our uh, movement of mass, which would be in that case our lithium um, mass conservation. And there we can see the concentration of lithium affects the charge carrier flux, which comes into our mass conservation together with our charge carrying source term and our charge carrier uh, accumulation. So by setting things up that way, it gives us a lot of flexibility to, uh, to be able to adapt the code to new systems quickly and easily. Yep. And here we just see an example of how that would look uh, for, the, for the full battery and what the state variables uh, there uh, would be. And I'm just gonna go ahead and move on for the interest of time and we can see an example of uh, how this is applied. So uh, if we uh, take a, a kind of schematic uh, view of a cell and we recall that uh, this consists of our negative current collector with a negative electrode, a separator and our positive electrode and positive current collector uh, all linked together with a liquid electrolyte. Uh, if we want to simulate this uh, system, those simulations are normally conducted by setting boundary conditions that are either an electric potential or an electric current on the current collectors. So in this case, uh, we normally apply a fixed uh, uh, potential at the negative electrode and a uh, fixed uh, current at the positive electrode. So in the uh, results of the simulation, we'll just plot the electrolyte below the, uh, the uh, electrodes so we can see everything together easily. And uh, we'll simulate the discharge behavior of a cell at uh, 1C rate. So 1C means that it discharges the entire capacity in one hour. Okay, and here we can see the results of that. So let's start by looking at the, the right here. And here we can see the uh, voltage of the cell uh, over time. We can see at the beginning it's fully charged and our voltage is very high. And then as we start discharging it, the uh, voltage steadily drops until we get to the very end and all of the active material is consumed. There's nothing left to drive the reaction and the cell voltage drops uh, very fast. We can then look at how this affects the uh, negative and positive electrodes here. So at the beginning, uh, the negative electrode is full of lithium, so it's, uh, it's red, uh, close to, to fully lithiated. And as the cell is discharged, our negative electrode loses lithium, becomes blue, and our positive electrode gains lithium and uh, becomes red. So we're just moving all of the lithium from our negative electrode to our positive electrode. And to do that, all of that lithium is uh, moving through our electrolyte. So we can have a look at, at this plot here uh, at the bottom. And we see that once the cell discharge starts, the concentration of lithium in the electrolyte near the negative electrode goes up to about 1.4 molar and uh, falls across the cell uh, into the positive electrode where we have local concentrations of about 0.7 uh, moles per liter. 
And this kind of information is important because especially when it comes to uh, electrolytes, we can start with a nominal uh, concentration, but uh, operating at, at high rates, there may exist a, uh, a case where the local electrolyte is uh, depleted and that can uh, lead to some dangerous uh, aging uh, mechanisms in the cell. So uh, this, uh, this uh, model has, has the benefit to give us insight that we need into battery cell performance. It's also very fast. So this is kind of a real-time video that I took earlier uh, showing how fast uh, the simulation can, uh, can be performed. And it takes a total of about 20 seconds. Yep, there we go. So uh, very fast, and that's that's something that's unique uh, among the uh, the open source uh, battery uh, modeling tools, um, especially for two D and three D simulations. So um, I'm running out of time, so I think I'm just going to skip through these and and say uh, what we've shown is also applicable for three D three D simulations, and um, again, batteries are essential to the future of energy systems. The performance and lifetime of these devices are very complicated and can be difficult to predict. But uh, by applying these model-based design tools, we're able to speed up the development uh, of high-performance battery cells uh, to meet the industry needs. Um, BATMO will be a, a free uh, MRST extension uh, for the community to uh, model electrochemical systems uh, that's flexible. So it's uh, not just batteries, but uh, uh, hydrogen systems as well and uh, we can deliver fast solutions on 1D, 2D, and 3D meshes. So thank you to, uh, to my colleagues uh, who helped us develop this, and um, thank you to the European Union who has uh, partially funded this work through the Hydra Project, where you can learn more at our website here. So thank you for your time and, and your attention. One question already in Zule. Um, so the question is from Nikolai Andrianov, who says, uh, why does the voltage drop sharply towards the end of the simulation? Yep, that's a good question. Um, basically, the, uh, what's happening is that uh, our materials only have so much capacity to store lithium or to donate lithium. So once we get to the point where uh, our active materials are completely lithiated and we can't put any more in, uh, then the, uh, the voltage drops very fast right there at the end. You get this kind of avalanche failure. Um, so if anybody else has any more questions, please feel free to uh, put, post them on Zulip also after the symposium. And uh, we will have the uh, Zulip open for a week after the symposium at least. Um, I also had a, another question, which was, were, were there any challenges with the using MRST for battery simulation? Was there anything that was specifically reservoir simulation that needed to be overcome or was it fairly simple just changing the names? Well, from, from my perspective, it, it was fairly simple, but uh, I, was, I was lucky enough uh, that I have uh, MRST experts uh, who are, who are uh, you know, helping to, to, do, to do the implementation. Um, the, the fundamental setup of the equations is very similar to things that, that uh, at least from what I saw today, is uh, similar to, to things that you deal with in reservoir simulations. Um, I think the, the, the most difficult uh, and, uh, and unique aspect of battery modeling is the coupling between our solid active materials and our liquid electrolyte through this butler fulmer uh, equation. Uh, that can, that can, you know, it's, it's an exponential uh, uh, coupling, so that can create some challenges. But uh, yeah, I think it, it went pretty, pretty easily and pretty fast adapting our, our models to MRST. Yeah.